Section 42 of Tales of Old Japan. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Awaii in April 2011. Tales of Old Japan by Lord Reedsdale. Appendix A, Part 2 on certain things to be borne in mind by the witnesses when a clansman is ordered by his feudal lord to perform harakiri the sentence must be read out by the censor of the clan who also acts as witness he should take his place in front of the criminal at a distance of twelve feet according to some books the distance should be eighteen feet and he should sit obliquely not facing the criminal he should lay his sword down by his side, but, if he pleases, he may wear it in his girdle. He must read out the sentence distinctly. If the sentence be a long document, to begin reading in a very loud voice, and afterwards drop into a whisper, has an appearance of faint-heartedness, but to read it throughout in a low voice is worse still. It should be delivered clearly from beginning to end. It is the duty of the chief witness to set an example of fortitude to the other persons who are to take part in the execution. When the second has finished his work, he carries the head to the chief witness, who, after inspecting it, must declare that he has identified it. He then should take his sword and leave his place. It is sufficient, however, that the head should be struck off without being carried to the chief witness, in that case, the second receives his instructions beforehand. On rising, the chief witness should step out with his left foot and turn to the left. If the ceremony takes place out of doors, the chief witness, wearing his sword and dirk, should sit upon a box. He must wear his hempen dress of ceremony. He may hitch his trousers up slightly. According to his rank, he may wear his full dress, that is, wings over his full dress. It is the part of the chief witness to instruct the seconds and others in the duties which they have to perform, and also to preconcert measures in the event of any mishap occurring. If whilst the various persons to be engaged in the ceremony are rubbing up their military lore and preparing themselves for the event, any other person should come in, they should immediately turn the conversation. Persons of the rank of samurai should be familiar with all the details of the harakiri, and to be seen discussing what should be done in the case anything went wrong, and so forth, would have an appearance of ignorance. If, however, an intimate friend should go to the place, rather than have any painful concealment, he may be consulted upon the whole affair. When the sentence has been read, it is probable that the condemned man will have some last words to say to the chief witness. It must depend on the nature of what he has to say, whether it will be received or not. If he speaks in a confused or bewildered manner, no attention is paid to it. His second should lead him away, of his own accord, or at a sign from the chief witness. If the condemned man be a person who has been given in charge to a prince by the government, the prince, after reading of the sentence, should send his retainers to the prisoner with a message to say that the decrees of the government are not to be eluded, but that if he has any last wishes to express, they are ordered by their lord to receive them. If the prisoner is a man of high rank, the lord of the palace should go in person to hear his last wishes. The condemned man should answer in the following way. Sir, I thank you for your careful consideration, but I have nothing that I wish to say. I am greatly indebted to you for the great kindness which I have received since I have been under your charge. I beg you to take my respects to your lord and to the gentlemen of your clan who have treated me so well. Or, he may say, Sirs, I have nothing to say. Yet, since you are so kind as to think of me, I should be obliged if you would deliver such and such a message to such an one. This is the proper and becoming sort of speech for the occasion. If the prisoner entrusts them with any message, the retainers should receive it in such a manner as to set his mind at rest. 
Should he ask for writing materials in order to write a letter, as this is forbidden by the law, they should tell him so, and not grant his request. Still they must feel that it is painful to refuse the request of a dying man, and must do their best to assist him. They must exhaust every available kindness and civility, as was done in the period Genroku in the case of the Ronins of Asano Takumi no Kami. The Prince of Higo, after the sentence had been read, caused paper and writing materials to be taken to their room. If the prisoner is light-headed from excitement, it is no use furnishing him with writing materials. It must depend upon circumstances, but when a man has murdered another, having made up his mind to abide by the consequences, then that man's execution should be carried through with all honour. When a man kills another on the spot, in a fit of ungovernable passion, and then is bewildered and dazed by his own act, the same pains need not be taken to conduct matters punctiliously. If the prisoner be a careful man, he will take an early opportunity, after he has been given in charge, to express his wishes. To carry kindness so far as to supply writing materials and the like is not obligatory. If any doubt exists upon the point, the chief witness may be consulted. After the ronins of Asano Takumi no Kami had heard their sentence in the palace of Matsudaira Oki no Kami, that daimyo in person went and took leave of them, and, calling Oishi Chikara, the son of their chief, to him, said, Footnote Oishi Chikara was separated from his father, who was one of the seventeen delivered over to the charge of the prince of Higo. End footnote. Quote, I have heard that your mother is at home in your own country. How she will grieve when she hears of your death and that of your father, I can well imagine. If you have any message that you wish to leave for her, tell me, without standing upon ceremony, and I will transmit it without delay. End quote. For a while Chikara kept his head bent down towards the ground. At last he drew back a little and, lifting his head, said, I humbly thank your lordship for what you have been pleased to say. My father warned me from the first that our crime was so great that, even were we to be pardoned by a gracious judgment upon one count, I must not forget that there would be a hundred million counts against us, for which we must commit suicide, and that if I disregarded his words, his hatred would pursue me after death. My father impressed this upon me at the temple called Sengakuji and again when I was separated from him to be taken to the place of Prince Sengoku. Now my father and myself have been condemned to perform harakiri, according to the wish of our hearts. Still I cannot forget to think of my mother. When we parted at Kyoto, she told me that our separation would be for long, and she bade me not to play the coward when I thought of her. As I took a long leave of her then, I have no message to send to her now. When he spoke thus, Oki no Kami and all his retainers, who were drawn up around him, were moved to tears in admiration of his heroism. Although it is right that the condemned man should bathe and partake of wine and food, these details should be curtailed. Even should he desire these favours, it must depend upon his conduct whether they be granted or refused. He should be caused to die as quickly as possible. Should he wish for some water to drink, it should be given to him. If in his talk he should express himself like a noble samurai, all pains should be exhausted in carrying out his execution. Yet, however careful a man he may be, as he nears his death, his usual demeanour will undergo a change. If the execution is delayed, in all probability it will cause the prisoner's courage to fail him. Therefore, as soon as the sentence shall have been passed, the execution should be brought to a conclusion. This, again, is a point for the chief witness to remember. Concerning Seconds, Kaishaku When the condemned man is one who has been given in charge for execution, six attendants are employed. 
when the execution is within the clan then two or three attendants will suffice the number however must depend upon the rank of the principal men of great nerve and strength must be selected for the office they must wear their hempen dress of ceremony and tuck up their trousers they must on no account wear either sword or dirk but have a small poniard hidden in their bosom these are the officers who attend upon the condemned man when he changes his dress and who sit by him on the right hand and on the left hand to guard him whilst the sentence is being read in the event of any mistake occurring such as the prisoner attempting to escape they knock him down and should he be unable to stand or to walk they help to support him the attendants accompanying the principal to the place of execution if they are six in number four of them take their seats some way off and mount guard while the other two should sit close behind the principal they must understand that should there be any mistake they must throw the condemned man and holding him down cut off his head with their poniard or stab him to death if the second bungles in cutting off the head and the principal attempts to rise it is the duty of the attendants to kill him they must help him to take off his upper garments and bare his body in recent times however there have been cases where the upper garments have not been removed this depends upon circumstances the setting up of the white screen and the laying the corpse in the coffin are duties which although they may be performed by other officers originally devolved upon the six attendants when a common man is executed he is bound with cords and so made to take his place but a samurai wears his dress of ceremony is presented with a dagger and dies thus there ought to be no anxiety lest such a man should attempt to escape still as there is no knowing what these six attendants may be called upon to do men should be selected who thoroughly understand their business the seconds are three in number the chief second the assistant second and the inferior second when the execution is carried out with proper solemnity three men are employed still a second and assistant second are sufficient if three men serve as seconds their several duties are as follows the chief second strikes off the head that is his duty he is the most important officer in the execution by harakiri the assistant second brings forward the tray on which is placed the dirk that is his duty he must perform his part in such a manner that the principal second is not hindered in his work the assistant second is the officer of second importance in the execution the third or inferior second carries the head to the chief witness for identification and in the event of something suddenly occurring to hinder either of the other two seconds he should bear in mind that he must be ready to act as his substitute his is an office of great importance and a proper person must be selected to fill it although there can be no such thing as a kaishaku second in any case except in one of harakiri still in old times guardians and persons who assisted others were also called kaishaku the reason for this is because the kaishaku or second comes to the assistance of the principal if the principal were to make any mistake at the fatal moment it would be a disgrace to his dead body it is in order to prevent such mistakes that the kaishaku or second is employed it is the duty of the kaishaku to consider this as his first duty when a man is appointed to act as second to another what shall be said of him if he accepts the office with a smiling face yet he must not put on a face of distress it is as well to attempt to excuse oneself from performing the duty there is no heroism in cutting a man's head off well and it is a disgrace to do it in a bungling manner yet must not a man allege lack of skill as a pretext for evading the office for it is an unworthy thing that a samurai should want the skill required to behead a man 
If there are any that advocate employing young men as seconds, it should rather be said that their hands are inexpert. To play the coward and yield up the office to another man is out of the question. When a man is called upon to perform the office, he should express his readiness to use his sword. The dirk may be employed, but the sword is the proper weapon. As regards the sword, the second should borrow that of the principal. If there is any objection to this, he should receive a sword from his lord. He should not use his own sword. When the assistant seconds have been appointed, the three should take counsel together about the details of the place of execution. When they have been carefully instructed by their superiors in all the ceremonies, and having made careful inquiry, should there be anything wrong, they should appeal to their superiors for instruction. The seconds wear their dresses of ceremony when the criminal is a man given in charge by the government. When he is one of their own clan, they need only wear the trousers of the samurai. In old days, it is said that they were dressed in the same way as the principal, and some authorities assert that at the harakiri of a nobleman of high rank, the seconds should wear white clothes, and that the handle of the sword should be wrapped in white silk. If the execution takes place in the house, they should partially tuck up their trousers. If in the garden, they should tuck them up entirely. The seconds should address the principal and say, Sir, we have been appointed to act as your seconds. We pray you to set your mind at rest, and so forth, but this must depend upon the rank of the criminal. At this time, too, if the principal has any last wish to express, the second should receive it, and should treat him with every consideration in order to relieve his anxiety. If the second has been selected by the principal on account of old friendship between them, or if the latter, during the time that he has been in charge, has begged some special retainer of the palace to act as his second in the event of his being condemned to death, the person so selected should thank the principal for choosing so unworthy a person, and promise to beg his lord to allow him to act as second. So he should answer and comfort him, and, having reported the matter to his lord, should act as second. He should take that opportunity to borrow his principal's sword in some such terms as the following. As I am to have the honour of being your second, I would fain borrow your sword for the occasion. It may be a consolation to you to perish by your own sword, with which you are familiar. If, however, the principal declines and prefers to be executed with the second's sword, his wish must be complied with. If the second should make an awkward cut with his own sword, it is a disgrace to him. Therefore he should borrow someone else's sword, so that the blame may rest with the sword and not with the swordsman. Although this is the rule, and although every samurai should wear a sword fit to cut off a man's head, still, if the principal has begged to be executed with the second's own sword, it must be done as he desires. It is probable that the condemned man will inquire of his second about the arrangements which have been made. He must attend, therefore, to rendering himself capable of answering all such questions. Once upon a time, when the condemned man inquired of his second whether his head would be cut off at the moment when he received the tray with the dirk upon it, No, replied the second, at the moment when you stab yourself with the dirk, your head will be cut off. At the execution of one Sanu, he told his second that, when he had stabbed himself in the belly, he would utter a cry, and begged him to be cool when he cut off his head. The second replied that he would do as he wished, but begged him in the meantime to take the tray with the dirk, according to proper form. When Sano reached out his hand to take the tray, the second cut off his head immediately. Now, although this was not exactly right, still, as the second acted so in order to save a samurai from the disgrace of performing the harakiri improperly, by crying out, it can never be wrong for a second to act kindly. If the principal urgently requests to be allowed really to disembowel himself, this wish may, according to circumstances, be granted. 
but in this case care must be taken that no time be lost in striking off the head the custom of striking off the head the prisoner only going through the semblance of disembowelling himself dates from the period yempo about one hundred ninety years ago when the principal has taken his place the second strips his right shoulder of the dress of ceremony which he allows to fall behind his sleeve and drawing his sword lays down the scabbard taking care that his weapon is not seen by the principal then he takes his place on the left of the principal and close behind him the principal should sit facing the west and the second facing the north and in that position should he strike the blow when the second perceives the assistant second bring out the tray on which is laid the dirk he must brace up his nerves and settle his heart beneath his navel when the tray is laid down he must put himself in position to strike the blow he should step out first with the left foot and then change so as to bring his right foot forward this is the position which he should assume to strike he may however reverse the position of his feet when the principal removes his upper garments the second must poise his sword when the principal reaches out his hand to draw the tray towards him as he leans his head forward a little is the exact moment for the second to strike there are all sorts of traditions about this some say that the principal should take the tray and raise it respectfully to his head and set it down and that this is the moment to strike there are three rules for the time of cutting off the head the first is when the dirk is laid on the tray the second is when the principal looks at the left side of his belly before inserting the dirk the third is when he inserts the dirk if these three moments are allowed to pass it becomes a difficult matter to cut off the head so says tradition however four moments for cutting are also recorded first when the assistant second retires after having laid down the stand on which is the dirk second when the principal draws the stand towards him third when he takes the dirk in his hand fourth when he makes the incision into the belly although all four ways are approved still the first is too soon the last three are right and proper in short the blow should be struck without delay if he has struck off the head at a blow without failure the second taking care not to raise his sword but holding it point downwards should retire backward a little and wipe his weapon kneeling he should have plenty of white paper ready in his girdle or in his bosom to wipe away the blood and rub up his sword having replaced his sword in its scabbard he should readjust his upper garments and take his seat to the rear when the head has fallen the junior second should enter and taking up the head present it to the witness for inspection when he has identified it the ceremony is concluded if there is no assistant or junior second the second as soon as he has cut off the head carrying his sword reversed in his left hand should take the head in his right hand holding it by the top knot of hair should advance towards the witness passing on the right side of the corpse and show the right profile of the head to the witness resting the chin of the head upon the hilt of his sword and kneeling on his left knee then returning again round by the left of the corpse kneeling on his left knee and carrying the head in his left hand and resting it on the edge of his sword he should again show the left profile to the witness it is also laid down as another rule that the second laying down his sword should take out paper from the bosom of his dress and placing the head in the palm of his left hand and taking the top knot of hair in his right hand should lay the head upon the paper and so submit it for inspection either way may be said to be right note to lay down thick paper and place the head on it shows a disposition to pay respect to the head to place it on the edge of the sword is insulting the course pursued must depend upon the rank of the person if the ceremony is to be curtailed it may end with the cutting off of the head 
That must be settled beforehand, in consultation with the witness. In the event of the second making a false cut, so as not to strike off the head at a blow, the second must take the head by the top knot, and, pressing it down, cut it off. Should he take bad aim and cut the shoulder by mistake, and should the principal rise and cry out before he has time to writhe, he should hold him down and stab him to death, and then cut off his head. Or the assistant seconds, who are sitting behind, should come forward and hold him down, while the chief second cuts off his head. It may be necessary for the second, after he has cut off the head, to push down the body, and then take up the head for inspection. If the body does not fall at once, which is said to be sometimes the case, the second should pull the feet to make it fall. There are some who say that the perfect way for the second to cut off the head is not to cut right through the neck at a blow, but to leave a little uncut, and, as the head hangs by the skin, to seize the top knot and slice it off, and then submit it for inspection. The reason of this is, lest, the head being struck off at a blow, the ceremony should be confounded with an ordinary execution. According to the old authorities, this is the proper and respectful manner. After the head is cut off, the eyes are apt to blink, and the mouth to move, and to bite the pebbles and sand. This being hateful to see, at what amongst samurai is so important an occasion, and being a shameful thing, it is held to be best not to let the head fall, but to hold back a little in delivering the blow. Perhaps this may be right, yet it is a very difficult matter to cut so as to leave the head hanging by a little flesh, and there is the danger of missing the cut, and as any mistake in the cut is most horrible to see, it is better to strike a fair blow at once. Others say that, even when the head is struck off at a blow, the semblance of slicing it off should be gone through afterwards, yet be it borne in mind that this is unnecessary. Three methods of carrying the sword are recognized among those skilled in swordsmanship. If the rank of the principal be high, the sword is raised aloft. If the principal and second are of equal rank, the sword is carried at the center of the body. If the principal be of inferior rank, the sword is allowed to hang downwards. The proper position for the second to strike from is kneeling on one knee, but there is no harm in his standing up. Others say that if the execution takes place inside the house, the second should kneel, if in the garden, he should stand. These are not points upon which to insist obstinately. A man should strike in whatever position is most convenient to him. The chief duty for the assistant second to bear in mind is the bringing in of the tray with the dirk, which should be produced very quietly when the principal takes his place. It should be placed so that the condemned man may have to stretch his hand well out in order to reach it. Footnote. It should be placed about three feet away from him. End footnote. The assistant second then returns to his own place. But if the condemned man shows any signs of agitation, the assistant second must lend his assistance, so that the head may be properly cut off. It once happened that the condemned man, having received the tray from the assistant second, held it up for a long time without putting it down, until those near him had over and over again urged him to set it down. It also happens that after the tray has been set down and the assistant second has retired, the condemned man does not put out his hand to take it. Then must the assistant second press him to take it. Also the principal may ask that the tray be placed a little nearer to him, in which case his wish must be granted. The tray may also be placed in such a way that the assistant second, holding it in his left hand, may reach the dirk to the condemned man, who leans forward to take it. Which is the best of all these ways is uncertain. The object to aim at is that the condemned man should lean forward to receive the blow. Whether the assistant second retires or not must depend upon the attitude assumed by the condemned man. If the prisoner be an unruly, violent man, 
a fan instead of a dirk should be placed upon the tray and should he object to this he should be told in answer that the substitution of the fan is an ancient custom this may occur sometimes it is said that once upon a time in one of the places of the daimyos a certain brave matron murdered a man and having been allowed to die with all the honours of the harakiri a fan was placed upon the tray and her head was cut off this may be considered right and proper if the condemned man appears inclined to be turbulent the seconds without showing any sign of alarm should hurry to his side and urging him to get ready quickly cause him to make all his preparations with speed and to sit down in his place the chief second then drawing his sword should get ready to strike and ordering him to proceed as fast as possible with the ceremony of receiving the tray should perform his duty without appearing to be afraid a certain prince katto having condemned one of his counsellors to death assisted at the ceremony behind a curtain of slips of bamboo the counsellor whose name was katayama was bound and during that time glared fiercely at the curtain and showed no signs of fear the chief second was a man named jihei who has always been used to treat katayama with great respect so jihei sword in hand said to katayama sir your last moment has arrived be so good as to turn your cheek so that your head may be straight when katayama heard this he replied fellow you are insolent and as he was looking round jihei struck the fatal blow the lord katto afterwards inquired of jihei what was the reason of this and he replied that as he saw that the prisoner was meditating treason he determined to kill him at once and put a stop to his rebellious spirit this is a pattern for other seconds to bear in mind when the head has been struck off it becomes the duty of the junior second to take it up by the top knot and placing it upon some thick paper laid over the palm of his hand to carry it for inspection by the witness this ceremony has been explained above if the head be bald he should pierce the left ear with the stiletto carried in the scabbard of his dirk and so carry it to be identified he must carry thick paper in the bosom of his dress inside the paper he shall place a bag with rice bran and ashes in order that he may carry the head without being sullied by the blood when the identification of the head is concluded the junior second's duty is to place it in a bucket if anything should occur to hinder the chief second the assistant second must take his place it happened on one occasion that before the execution took place the chief second lost his nerve yet he cut off the head without any difficulty but when it came to taking up the head for inspection his nervousness so far got the better of him as to be extremely inconvenient this is a thing against which persons acting as seconds have to guard end of section forty two